Welcome back everybody, my name is Taylor Martin. This is The Best Damn EDC, and today I'm gonna to do a little bit of a q and It's been a while since I've done one, but yesterday I asked over on Instagram for you guys to send me some questions. There were a ton of responses to that, so plenty of questions to go through for me to answer. But before we get to that, just a couple of things. This came in the mail yesterday. If you didn't know, I have a P.O. box that's listed in the description of every single video. It's on the channel description. It's everywhere, it's on Instagram. I have a P.O. box, you can send me stuff if you want, but mainly it's for brands to send stuff if they want me to check it out without having to you know, communicate with me first, they can just send something. This is an example of that. Uh, this is from Abiot, A-B-E-O-T Toothpicks. Uh, I, I think I know what's inside here, just based, just based on the name, but I'm gonna open this up just because I'm not gonna do a video on toothpicks. Uh, so if you wanna send me something, the P.O. box is listed pretty much everywhere. If you're a brand or if you're just somebody who watches the show, whatever it may be, if you've got something cool you want to show me, send it and I will open it up. Wow, that's a that's actually kind of a tough envelope for a toothpick. All right, so that's all that's inside there. It looks like multiple packs of toothpicks. You can see there's the name of the company, A-B-E-O-T Toothpicks. I figured they'd be like titanium toothpicks or something, but I actually looked this company up and they don't do that. These are all made out of uh, northern white birch, and they come in flavors. Now, if this company had done their research, they would know that I'm a huge scotch and bourbon fan, and they have scotch and bourbon toothpicks. But just a little information. Here's the founder's information. It's toothpicks. But these are cherry lime, cinnamon, vanilla peach, and orange mint. I know Alex is going to steal the, the orange mint, but... uh. Just some toothpicks. Well, that was not EDC related, really. I do carry toothpicks inside my bit vault, but I have to cut them to size, and these are really heavy duty looking toothpicks. Anyway, the next order of business. This came in the mail yesterday as a bit of a surprise. This is a Giltec Ruck, the version 2.0 with my logo on it. And I'm happy to announce that I will be selling these over on Carry Commission when the site launches. That store will carry these. In this version, that is a black anodized aluminum version of the 2.0 Ruck, and they're gonna come like this with the little leather lanyard and the knurled brass bead. This will be sold as a package as the best damn EDC Ruck. So very excited about that. I didn't even know that the Tyler was making these. These just showed up at my house yesterday, and when I DM'd him, we talked about it, and uh, this will be sold as is over on the website, but I'm sure I will sell other rucks or tons of other things, but I think I can sell different versions of the ruck as well. But this one specifically is definitely gonna be on carry commission with the brass bead and the leather lanyard as the best damn EDC ruck. Okay, time for lots and lots and lots of questions. First up, we have a question from J Myers Knives. What are your top three knives? Well, if I were to narrow it down right now, if you'd go by what I carry all the time, I have the bug out, just completely standard OD green bug out with the, the coated blade. I've been carrying that almost every day. Also the Fox Knives Suru that I got in the Urban EDC supply box. And um, it's hard for me to pick a third because I love that PM2 that EDC Alabama customized for me, but this Thursday, I have a new knife coming, and uh, I'm quite excited about it. Felix Siri says, have you ever thought about doing an episode about an international viewer? There were tons and tons of international viewers who submit to the show, and I do feature those people. But I guess you're asking in addition to that is, will I do like an EDC Weekly specifically for international viewers who can't carry locking blades and can only carry slip joints? Yeah, I did a video specifically on uh, Victorinox Swiss Army, and I could do an episode of the EDC Weekly that's all slip joints easily, very, very easily. So yeah, yeah, uh, that's something to, to add to my list of topics for the EDC Weekly. The very next question from Ultimate Hype Man 07 said, could you recommend some awesome slip joint knives? So while we're on the topic, uh, my favorite, if you haven't already heard me talk about it a billion times, is the Benchmade Proper. Uh, with the clip point and the micarta scales, I think it's a fantastic knife. It's beautiful. It's great to use. It just feels great in the hand. It's something about opening a blade with two hands like that and using it is just, I don't know. It's just really, really nice. I love that knife. 
Uh, but there are a lot of other slip joint knives out there. The Lion Steel Roundhead and the CK01 line. Those are all phenomenal if you can find them. And also Great Eastern Cutlery if you can find those. They're all really kind of tough to come across unless you're looking at aftermarket or or something like that. But I'm, I'm really only kind of scratching the surface of slip joints. I've not really dove into that myself. And of course, Cody from over in the Discord, uh, yeet question mark, you're banned for life, sir. You're banned, you're out, get him out of here. <laughs> that Maiku guy says, do you prefer an EDC organizer or just putting everything in your pockets? Uh, currently, right now, I know on the weekly that I said I was carrying the Urban Organizer, I switched back to the Yellow Birch Outfitters Pocket Pro Modern Carry, uh, mainly because this is most of my EDC in one package and it's not too heavy, especially now that I'm carrying the bug out. This whole package is really quite lightweight. Um, I'd actually be interested to see what it's like on the scale, but yeah, I've been going back to these pocket organizers. I just ordered this in gray, so Yellow Birch, just came out with a limited edition. He's doing a sprint run of a dark gray with black trim of this right here. It's 50 bucks and uh, there are only gonna be 250 of them. I know there are at least only 249 now because I bought one. So if you want uh, one of these in gray, which is gonna be a limited, once they're gone, they're gone sort of deal. They're available right now. I will link to it down below. But yeah, to answer your question, I've been going back to these organizers mainly because I want to weigh to carry these these notebooks easier. Kind of a similar question from Atomic Raul. What are your thoughts on the Trucker's Hitch from Hitch and Timber? I think it's a great wallet. I've carried it a lot. It was one of my mainstays for about two months, which you guys have kind of been ragging on me over in the Discord about like how fast I go through gear. Two months for me with all the wallets and things that I've received and all the gear that I get, that says something because I've got so many options. I could switch it up every day but I stick with one because I like it so much. The only problem I had with the, the trucker's hitch, and one of the reasons I switched away, is because the, the elastic band inside only really holds a Fisher Space Pin Bullet. There may be some other pins that work really well in there, but as you guys know, I've switched over to these Big Idea Design pins because I love this one and the Pocket Pro, just the, the actual size of it is perfect, and I love the, the Stonewatch Titanium, so, these don't work with the trucker's hitch and that's one of the reasons I switched away and also if I'm going to carry a notebook and write in it I honestly prefer a slightly larger note. My cousin was actually in the military and he could not actually carry a phone with him because he was going into high security locations where phones were not allowed so he had to carry something in like that and he really really truly liked the trucker's hitch because it was all he needed in one package. Uh, he still does some stuff like security work I don't know exactly what he's doing now but it's also kind of a similar situation where he can't bring his phone in the building for work and he has to have something like that. So the trucker's hitch was perfect for him. And uh, I'm not sure if he bought it. At Christmas, he was talking about buying it, but I think it's a really neat wallet. I like it, but for me, I'm going with something with an actual uh, pocket notebook rather than those little itty bitty mini notebooks. I do think it's a great wallet. Michael from Hitch and Timber makes phenomenal products and the Trucker's Hitch is one of my favorite products from him. Here's a good one from Steven X01, rye, bourbon, or scotch. As you guys know, I am very much in love with all of these things. Whiskey in general is just, uh, I love whiskey, but uh, back here I have a rye, that is the High West double rye, but if I had to choose one moving forward it would by and large be scotch scotch is so good I'm, i love peat bombs and uh, somebody asks this later on what's my favorite whiskey that would be lagavulin 16. i'm just getting that one out of the way now lagavulin 16 bar none oh it's right there it's from seth lopez 0181 that is lagavulin 16. urban carvers or dustin bean asks favorite music genre or band and that's that's a loaded question especially as some of the people in the discord have heard me talk about music now um i i used to be in a metal band actually two there was a death metal ish band that i was the front man for and a hardcore band when i was in high school uh that one's a little cringy but i i was into that music scene and I have two bands that really compete for favorite band of all time. They just so happen to be local. I'm actually friends with one of the guys from Between the Barrier to Me. They were actually just nominated for a Grammy. They didn't get it, unfortunately. I think they got ripped off. 
to be completely honest. But between the Barry to me, they are prog metal. They're phenomenal. They're from all over North Carolina, really. But Paul, uh, I met him through coffee, the coffee stuff I used to do, Best Damn Coffee, actually. That was one of the bands growing up that I listened to all the time. Loved them to death. I still listen to them very, very often. And Between the Barry to me is, is one of those bands that I will always listen to. Uh, the other is the Ava Brothers, who is actually from Concord. Um, they, they're great. They're phenomenal. I listen to them several times a week, probably close to every day. And again, I've been listening to them since I was in high school and I probably will never stop listening to them. But the coffee shop that I'd take photos for and do some social media stuff for is Scott Avid's favorite coffee shop. So he comes in all the time and I've had a chance to talk to him. I'm not sure if he's a Spyderco or Benchmade guy because he walked in. I swear I saw a Benchmade clip in his pocket, but we were talking about Spyderco one day. So I don't know. That's tangential. It's off topic, but those are two of my favorite bands of all time. They just so happen to be local. That is not just, it just, it is the way it is. I love music. I listen to a ton of bands, but if I had to choose one genre that I listen to more than any, it's probably folk slash bluegrass. Those two together, you, you throw some folk music with some banjo on it. I'm done. There's nothing I can do to resist it. EDCgear.ig says Gonzo Knives. Um, no, no, and I touched on this in the EDC Weekly this past week. Knives that take inspiration from another knife maker, that's okay if you're just taking inspiration from them, or knives that are similar, or budget knives. Budget knives are perfectly fine, but when it gets into the territory of straight up copies from a company, like straight up ripoffs, like those that I showed you last week, the Sabenza copies that are available on Amazon for 15, 20 bucks, that's not okay, and Gonzo is one of the companies that does that. They are completely unashamed of their ripoffs. They, sh I think Gonzo rips off uh, Zero Tolerance a lot, but Zero Tolerance gets ripped off a lot. You've got tons of knife makers out there who get totally ripped off by companies like Gonzo, Effingrow, Effingrow, Effingrow. However it's pronounced, Land is another brand that does that. There's several Serenmu. There's so many companies out there that just straight up rip off other designs, and that's not okay. And people have tried to justify it to me by saying they wanted to buy a cheaper version of a Sabenza, like a knockoff version, like a total ripoff of the Sabenza, just to see if they'd like to spend the money on a Sabenza. And I say, no, no. If you're gonna get a Sabenza, this knife is not gonna be a direct representation of the actual Sabenza. It's gonna be a cheap, cheap, cheap knockoff of a Sabenza, and that means corners are cut and it's not gonna be the same thing. It actually goes against everything the Sabenza is. So it's not okay. And if you're going to buy a Sabenza, just save up and buy the Sabenza. And if you don't like it, I guarantee you that you can sell it right away and it's gonna get gone because that's just how this market is. So if you want it and you're afraid you're not actually gonna like it, I bought a Sabenza. I don't know if I'm gonna like it. If I don't like it, gone, I'm getting rid of it. So no, I don't like that argument. And if you say you're buying these knockoff knives because you can't afford the real thing, also no, go support another knife maker who's making something decent at that same price point, even if it's not what you want and save up for that grill knife. Save up for it to get the real thing. Don't support these companies and put money into the pockets of these companies who are ripping other companies off and stealing their intellectual property. Not cool, don't do it, period. Bob Sulanki says, uh, best option for trading and selling. Our EDC always evolves and our gear is sometimes mint. If you're interested in my Discord, there is a section, a classifieds channel for buying, selling, and trading EDC gear, used gear. And uh, it's gone really well. There are a lot of really great people in that community. I will say that I can't be held liable if something goes sideways, but I can do my best to try to protect people. These guys are, most of them are very trustworthy. Some of them like Cody are, are not and poker. You can't trust those guys. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that's the place for now, for now. I will say carry commission is definitely going to have some sort of classified section on it as well, where there will be more buyer protection and seller protection. And that's one of the things that I really wanna facilitate over on carry commission. An American Rifleman asks, have you ever considered a fixed blade for carry? I have, I absolutely have. And I know for a fact that later this week, I'm actually getting a fixed blade, but I'm not sure how I'm gonna carry it. Um, it would have to be a smaller fixed blade for sure. I don't want to EDC a fixed blade. 
But if I were to, if I were to pick a fixed blade to EDC, it would definitely be a Bradford Guardian. Um, some of those knives are beautiful. He also asks, have you ever considered getting a concealed carry permit for a handgun? Yeah, I absolutely have. I would like to get one very soon um, for a number of reasons. This has come up between Alex and I several times, just for my own personal safety. I'm now working really late at a place in a downtown area. Uh, I think this is a really safe city though. But just for me, there are people who are getting upset at me over one reason or another, something I've said in the Discord, or not winning giveaways because I run giveaways all the time just to try to give back to you guys. But some people get really upset when they have entered 20 times and not won or entered, you know, 50 times to the EDC Weekly and never been featured. That's just the way it goes. But people get really upset over things like that. And I have to be concerned for myself and I have to look out for myself. And that's one way to do that is uh, concealed carry. But for me personally, and I think this is a question later on, why am I not super into guns? I, I just don't care. Like I've shot them, they're fun to shoot, but as a daily carry thing, it's not something I want to carry. I don't want to carry more than I already do because I carry too much, but um, I don't know. It's just never really been a huge thing for me. I don't have anything against them. Definitely pro 2A, but it's just as much as it's your right to carry one every day. It's my right to not. Don't know how to pronounce your name, but you asked, what is your favorite budget knife? There are two that I'm gonna recommend, three technically, the Ontario Rat 1 or 2, or the SA Avispa, which is actually the one in the hand right now, um, but that's not the D2 version. If you're gonna go with those, go with the D2 versions. The Rat versions are gonna be cheaper. You can get a, a D2 version Rat 1 for like 30-ish bucks, 35, I think. Your SA Avispa and the Rat 2 and D2 are gonna be closer to 45 or 50. I think that's still in the budget range for the most part. Uh, if you want to go cheaper, just get the OS8 versions, but your D2 versions of those are stupid good for the price. And Bond also asks, have you ever tried Lagavulin? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I absolutely have. I also learned that the ABC store not far from here also carries Lagavulin 8, which is about half the price and almost as good. So I'm very happy. I don't have anything else to say. Jack Lawrence says, what did you go to school for post-secondary? So I went to a college. I went to Surrey Community College for a while and uh, CPCC, which is Central Piedmont Community College. And uh, then I dropped out. I had an opportunity for a job doing phone reviews and I took it and never looked back. So I was in school for originally uh, electrical engineering. And then I switched over last minute to uh, focus in computer science. And then I was presented with an opportunity and I took that opportunity and ran and never looked back. So I have no degree at all. I have, I'm one credit shy of an associates. So, and I think it's cooler being that one credit shy than it is actually having the degree. <laughs> because now I can say that I'm a dropout. If I had the degree, I'd technically not be a dropout and I would be stuck with an associates, which would get me nowhere. So I just never went back and I don't know that I ever will. Everything I do now, my resume is stacked. I've been doing hard work for a long time and I may never need to go back, but if I have to, it's there. And that's why I took the opportunity for a job rather than um, or school is because school will always be there, the job will. And do I regret it? Not one bit. I was not a fan of school. I hated it. I was okay. I was doing great, but just not my thing. DJ Solomon asks, how did you get involved in the EDC life? Well, I explained that I think I don't know, but I've explained it several times. The EDC thing was just kind of a transitional thing. It was just, I explained recently that the EDC Weekly was just a spinoff of the home screen critique I did for XDA developers, which they were totally fine with because EDC is outside technology really. But the way EDC actually originally happened for me is I did bag dumps for technology channels and I, I would write about what's in my bag and stuff like that. That's really, really, really close to EDC. And that's where my first pocket dump came from. I did a video after I left the tech industry, I did a video on my own EDC. That video did really well and it got the attention of some other people. I was approached by Playboy, which was weird. And I got put in a Playboy video about everyday carry. And it was just kind of downhill from there. Like it was like, oh, this is a thing I'll run with it. And after that whole thing happened, people just started sending me their everyday carries. And I didn't know why I wasn't asking for them. They just started sending them to me, maybe because nobody else really was asking for them at the time. This was back in 2014, I believe. 
2015 was when the Playboy video came out, but I was getting people submitting their EDCs well before that. So eventually I rolled out the EDC Weekly, which it did really well. I just got bored with it and uh, quit it and really wish I never had because we'd probably be doing this on a bigger scale by now, but here we are. I'm doing it and I'm enjoying it. And you guys have made this work for me. This is my living now. And that's amazing. So thank you guys. And since I touched on it, Cutlass Bob says, how old are you? And what do you do for a living? I'm 28 years old. I'll be 29 next month. And uh, I do this for a living. This is my full-time job. I make this show, the EDC weekly. I also do other EDC gear videos where I unbox things or feature a new maker. I run the community. I have a website with this. I'm building carry commission and uh, I parent the discord every single day. So you guys keep me busy. Uh, I would like to grow on this and expand this because right now things are YouTube revenue is just kind of all over the place and it makes me a little nervous about quitting my job so early on in the, the channel. But I wanted to uh, there, there are ways you can go about starting a YouTube channel and you can do it moonlighting for years, which I've done. I've done that. I, I moonlighted with Mod, which has 85,000, almost 86,000 subscribers. I was moonlighting while doing technology, trying to do outdoor content, DIY content. I was moonlighting for years, five years, and it just never clicked. It never clicked. This channel, I didn't want to do the same thing only because I spent a lot of my time, all of my free time making videos, and it jeopardized a lot of my relationships and friendships. I don't have much of a social life anymore, but I didn't want to do all that and risk all that and not have it pay off. And part of the problem with mod was that I could never dedicate enough time to it. I spent day in and day out doing technology content, writing how-to articles, making videos for CNET, and I never truly had the time that I wanted to dedicate to the stuff I was doing on the side. And Best Damn EDC was showing great promise at the very, very beginning, it still is, but I didn't want to let that opportunity pass a second time because you do not get too many chances uh, to grow a successful YouTube channel. It's just tough. The, the market is tough. The whole platform is super saturated with content and I'm competing with tens of thousands of other people for your attention, so it's a tough gig. It's tough, it's hard, it keeps me busy. I spend a lot of nights working through the night, but it's worth it. And I think I made the right call, but yeah, this, this is my full-time job. And I don't question that for a second. I don't think I made a mistake. I am just making it work. As tough as it may be, I'm making it work. And if the, the revenue dries up a little bit here or there, I am diversified. Um, but I also need to diversify a little more. I need to monetize a little better just so I can keep the channel going. But for now, things are good. Things are good. Channel's still growing. Views are up. Everything's up. And it's just, it's going great. Aldo Molina says, where's the video for the Nomad Tile Wallet? Uh, I did it. I did the video. Because he asked that, here's something I need to point out about this channel. I do not review gear. I don't review gear. I reviewed gear for eight years, nine years, almost 10 years. I don't want to review gear anymore, at least not right now. It's a grueling thing where you were constantly critiquing every little tiny detail of a product. And that got really old. I've done it for a long time and I don't care to do it right now. So I'm not reviewing gear. People are like, when I upload a new feature of a product, people are like, great review. I'm not reviewing stuff. I'm giving kind of a hot take on something, just my initial reaction, my initial opinion, but I'm not reviewing stuff. If you want knife reviews, you've got Gideon's Tactical, Nick Shabazz, uh, Cutlery Lover, um, Wrangler Star even does some, and you also have Slicey Dicey. Those are reviewers. I don't review stuff. I'm trying to be a discovery platform. I want you guys to be able to find new gear through me. That's the whole point. One, I'm not an expert in a lot of categories. It's hard to be an expert on all things. It just is. And if I try to review a watch, the watch people are gonna come at me and they're like, oh, you're wrong about this. And then I go to review a knife and they're like, oh, you're wrong about this. It's hard to know everything. And I got tired of that, trying to know everything about everything. I try to learn as much as I can about all these products. And I think I've come a very long way in a short amount of time. But the point is, I don't review products. I just want to bring new things to light for you, to show you the stuff that you didn't know exists, and to give the makers of these things a platform. Like, I know a lot of you did not know about Yellow Birch before I made that video. 
I did not review his products. I just said, hey, look at this cool thing. This dude's making this stuff in Connecticut. He's really great. He's a great guy and his product is great. Check it out. That's all I'm doing. And some of you may think that's a little frivolous, but really the point is that these videos are a helpful marketing platform for what I'm doing. That's it. That's it. I'm trying to reach out, find you guys, find the makers, connect you. And that's only a small piece of the pie. I might add reviews by somebody else later. I might add user reviews over on the website, which would be a great feature, but I'm not reviewing products. And EDC DLA Kumatich says, how about a little help? I would love, love, love some help. I am working around the clock. I'm not getting a ton of sleep, but I'm not complaining. I'm just saying I'm, I'm busy and I'm not able to do as much as I'd like to do, at least on the front end. I do so much stuff on the back end, I can't do enough on the front end. So yeah, help is something I'm trying to add and I don't know how to do it just yet because I can't afford to pay anybody because I can barely afford to pay my own bills right now. And Alex is gonna be out of work next month and out of work for the following several months and we don't know how we're gonna make ends meet. So I can't pay anybody. Um, so yeah, I, my hands are tied and I'm in a weird spot, but I'm working on it. Rusty Spoon says, best slip joint with one hand opening. So a lot of slip joints are nail nicks, but you can get a quick thumb stud. That is a screw on thumb stud that works really, really well. Maybe I'll do a video on the quick studs at some point because they're great. You can add one to your Benchmade proper or any other knife, as long as it sticks out from the body enough to where you can actually get some grip on it, some bite from the thumb stud. You can add a thumb stud to anything. So. If you have a proper and you want it to be one handed opening, add a thumb stud. The only problem that I have with it is that it won't work with the proper slip or many other organizers after you put that thumb stud on there because it adds just a little, little thickness and bulk to it. So it doesn't fit in the proper slip or some of the other uh, knife slips that I have, but it would fit in something like the yellow birch. The green bead 37 also asks when's the baby due? May 2nd is the due date, but we think she'll probably come just a little early. And if she comes six days early, she comes six days early. That is my birthday, which would be amazing. Quiro Garivero, I guess, says, could you share Peter McKinnon's gear-related Instagram account? No, I've already said too much. He'll probably hate me. Not risking it, sorry. <laughs> uh, Official Shane says, why won't you feature my EDC? And the, the short answer of it is, there are so many submissions that it's, it's sometimes impossible, you know? Uh, last month, there were maybe just under 400 submissions. The month before that, there were almost 600. That's almost 20 per day. People ask why they're not showing up on the website after they've submitted because they're submitting directly to the website. The problem is if we let you guys publish directly to the website, there's no copy editing. A lot of you don't even use punctuation or grammar. And we're publishing that to my website, which reflects on me and my quality. So I go through and edit everything. Or actually, Alex does it a lot of the time now, most of the time. But we copy edit your submissions and then we link all the products and format everything and then publish it. And it just takes time. It takes a lot of time because I'm also making YouTube videos. I'm emailing companies. I am trying to build a store. I'm juggling a lot of things right now. And that's just all there is to it. And this is where I'm looking for help is maybe somebody to come in and format these things. But that's that's just how it is right now. James Yolarb says, who is your favorite YouTuber that is not in the cool gear realm? And since we're on this topic, Peter McKinnon, because he's the one that made me up my YouTube game. Um, I have now three cameras and I do B-roll and I just, I upped my game because he showed me how to basically. And uh, there are a lot of other YouTubers I do watch and appreciate, but he's probably at the top of the list just because he's killing it. He is crushing it right now. His videos are amazing. And he has helped me personally through upping my own video quality because I've been making videos for like seven years now. And it wasn't until last year when I started watching him or two years ago when I started watching him that I started upping my game. I owe a lot to him and his tutorials and he makes interesting stuff. Bearded Prepper says, would you ever carry a small toolkit? What would you keep in it? So I carry a Maxpedition and inside that I have a Leatherman Wave, uh, the bit bar with an extension, the TI EDC wrench from Big Idea Design, the Rovi Von Aurora flashlight, the Griffin Pocket Tool XL, and a pin usually, and I, it's just the, the standard Maxpedition, the, not the EDC version, but the one step up, I think. Maybe, I don't remember, uh, but I put that in my backpack. So I don't carry that on my person, but that goes in my backpack that I carry with me every day. I left it at my mom's house last night and I'm, I'm upset. And Dylan, one of the guys who uh, 
works here in this office says, uh, when are you doing an office tour? Uh, I'm not, and you know I'm not, you're a troll. He also asks, when's the collab with MKBHD for his EDC? Uh, that's also not happening because MKBHD is uh, off doing things like interviewing Bill Gates and Elon Musk. So uh, I've known Marquez for a long time. Uh, we used to work together, but we don't really talk anymore. So thanks Dylan. <laughs> The last question I'm going to read, it comes from Oliver.com. He is the guy who sent me the backpack that I use every day from Meta Threads. He said, what camera do you shoot the episodes with? So the way I do my videos, I have a top down camera, a three quarter angle camera and a main camera. This camera in front of me that I shoot all of the EDC weekly episodes with is the Sony a7R 3 I love it to death. It's what I take all the still photos with too. This is a Panasonic Lumix GH4 to the side here. I've been using this camera for five years. I've made hundreds of videos, maybe thousands of videos with this camera. And this one above is the Sony a6500. And uh, I got that one last year, thought that was gonna be my main camera. And then I got a deal on this a7R 3 and I wanted a three angle setup. So here we are, the vast majority of the videos get shot on this camera right here. That is always my main camera. If I go run and gun, that's my camera, the a7R 3 Well, that's gonna do it. Thank you guys for sending your questions. If you want to do this again in the future, just let me know. I'm, I enjoy doing this and reading your questions. I could talk and answer questions all day. Well, that said, the EDC Weekly is gonna happen this Friday. Remember, it is a Discord only version of the EDC Weekly. So just because you submit does not mean you might get featured this week. You've got to submit through the website then you have to go join the Discord, talk for a little while, submit there as well, and then you are entered into this week's EDC Weekly. But if you just go to edcw.co and submit your EDC, you are entered into the giveaway regardless. It just means that this week, not the rest of the weeks of this month, this week, you're not eligible if you do not join and also post in the Discord. Thank you guys again. If you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful, hit that thumbs up button below and subscribe to see more stuff like this in the future. Hit that notification bell so you're notified when I upload new videos. And if you wanna support the channel, there are some links down below. If you click through those links and purchase gear that helps support what we do here by giving us a little bit of a kickback and not charging you anything extra. If you wanna support us even more, you can go to patreon.com forward slash best damn EDC. Be sure to find us around the web. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at best damn EDC. And you can find the new carry commission on Instagram, Twitter, the website, everything is carry commission. The website is carrycommission.com, but the rest, they're all just carry commission. And of course, you can find me, Taylor Martin, on Twitter and Instagram at Casper Tech. And until next time, carry on.